Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be doing something a little bit different and it's into our debugging series and what we're going to do today is I'm going to actually show you two ways you can actually debug uh, your motor output on your flight controller whether it's an all one flight controller uh, or just a normal flight controller whatever it is uh, you'll be able to debug it. Now the first method is going to be with this little portable oscilloscope, uh, the DS212, I'll leave a link to this down below, uh, and I'll show you how to set this up to be able to see, actually you could also, if you wanted to have fun with this, you could also see the difference between each protocol and all that kind of crazy good stuff. Uh, but today we're going to be doing two methods, which is one is going to be with this guy, and another one is going to be with actually an LED. So, you know, this is a very budget friendly uh, way. So if you're in a hurry to actually check it out, uh, you can basically go ahead and buy a lighter from any supermarket with LED, pull the LED out, stick it on, and you're good to go. So first, the first thing we're gonna do actually is we're gonna start with the oscilloscope here, and then we're gonna move to the LED. So as you can see here, what we need, let's take a look here. So for example, we are suspecting that uh, motor three here, yeah, we'll just say, well, we'll say motor three or any of these have, you know, an issue. We'll say it's motor three. I think something is wrong. I don't think it's outputting because the motor is not spinning, for example. So what would we do? Well, first we're going to bring this little oscilloscope here and let's just zoom that right there. All right. And then we're going to want to turn it on. Okay. It boots absolutely beautiful. So as you can see here, you have this, which is blue. Blue is channel A, which is the first channel. So that's where we have this guy connected to. And what we want to change, we want to actually change this to five volts. Now, what does this mean? This actually means that each square right here, because right now it's one volt, each square is one volt. However, the logical level or the way this speaks is on three volts. So you could leave it this way, but it'll be a very, very long um, thing and it could possibly get out of the screen. You really don't want that. You want to try to have everything always inside. So what you want to do is you want to scroll there and we can set it either two, two volts or five volts. We're going to stick to five volts here. And now we're going to go here. This is channel two, the yellow one. We, we don't have anything on channel two. Forget channel C. And then this is the time base. So this is right now currently five milliseconds on each square going this way. So if something is from this square to this square, it's five milliseconds. And if it's from this square to all the way this square, that's five plus five, which equals 10. So let's just leave it five milliseconds. The trigger is very important and I'll get into that right now. Um, right now it's on channel two, as you can see, it's yellow. You can only trigger on one. And as you can see, we change it to blue and this dotted line appeared. And I'll explain the trigger in a little bit. So let's go ahead and um, let me just actually, I'll just leave it the way it is right now. All right, so right now everything is on. Hopefully we should be able to get something. So what you want to do first, obviously, like anything, you need to first find ground. All right, so this one's going to be pretty easy. However, if you have this, please be careful when you put the alligator clip that you don't clip anything. So for example, you know, common sense would tell you to put the alligator clip on this ground. And if you were to do that, actually, you're going to start hitting the current sensor and you could cause a short right here. So we don't want that. Let's go look for See the ground on this side right here. Um, there it is. Let's see. Is it open? Nope. We have a connector in the way. So here it might be open. Let's see. Here's a ground. Uh, seems good. Let's do it right here then. So that's where we're going to set up our ground. And take very, take note. You see that's a tiny, tiny resistor. You don't want to hit that and just double check you're on ground. So we are on ground. Perfect. All right, so we've done that. Now let's go ahead and connect power. Now I highly recommend if you're doing this with your quad, uh, you remove the propellers because you're gonna need to enable the motors. So let's go ahead and give it power here. All right, beautiful. So next thing you wanna do is you actually wanna go to beta flight. All right, so now we're in beta flight and you, you, know, you wanna connect to your motor or whatever, motors tab, there's a motors tab. You wanna make sure you enable it and now it's enabled now what i'm going to do is actually i'm going to start all the motors here all right so we've gone ahead and started all the motors and then you're going to have to grab the other side of the probe here and remove that top piece which is this piece right here so we can go ahead and do that just like that and that pops out i right, make sure because look at this this is like spring loaded here so yeah just just don't think you ruined it or anything so let's just say we're going to debug motor two right there we think motor two has an issue so let's take a look at the oscilloscope while we do this 
So there we go. I'll move these wires out of the way. All right. So let's go ahead and check motor two right here. What you do is you want to touch the pad because we already have ground. And as you can see, we're starting to see some stuff there. So let's go ahead and take a look in beta flight. And I highly recommend you switch to multi shot just to make sure everything is working here. So let's just take a look. So, okay. And let's go to configurations. Just double check everything's working. So we're currently on multi shot. So that's good. I really like when I go to test, I like to test on multi shot. All right, so the motors seem like they're working, but it's not really making that much sense now. As you can see, those lines are very small. So what you would want to do then is you want to scroll to the time base and you want to decrease it. So my hand just came off of that. That's the trigger. Okay. now as you can see it's starting to kind of make sense so let's go back up and drop this to two volts as you can see now it's two volts per division so now something is starting to make sense so now we're at 50 uh, microseconds here and now what I'm going to do is we're going to actually play with the throttle level so let's go ahead and do that and I'm just gonna make this bigger for you guys all right so we are now there we go. So now we're on full throttle. We're actually going to decrease throttle here. Can you see that? That's live right now. So that's multi-shot. So this pin is actually working pretty nice. Now let's just say, well, every time I move pin two, motor three turns for some reason. So this is also another way you could actually test it. So if, uh, for example, so let's just put on motor two and we're going to spin motor two. And there you go, motor two is working beautiful. So this is full throttle, which is motor two. So I wanna to go to motor three. I think that's three right there. You can't tell, but we just blocked everything. Okay. So this is still zero throttle as you can see right there. And if we go back to motor two, it should be full throttle. So that's how you test with an oscilloscope if your motor your motor connections are working or your motor pads or your signal pads are actually working so on this flight controller obviously it's working and uh, what's so cool you don't have to apply full power you can just plug in your usb it's a lot safer um and uh, you should be good to go so as you just saw there everything's working beautiful it was pretty simple but now let's get into something called the trigger so let's go ahead and set this up again it's a bit difficult to keep doing it like this all right so let's go ahead now the trigger is already set for us right now so what you want to do with the trigger is the trigger basically all right there we go we need that so look look what happens when i change the trigger to channel two this will start happening you won't make really any sense of it depends on how much data is going through but right now we will still be able to see the thing go up but we want it to be nice static and stable so that's when we enable the trigger to be on channel one and then we get this but however you still need to do some modifications here so when you go to trigger you want that blue line to be somewhere towards the middle of the spike kind of so as you can see there's a threshold here and you can see myself moving this line as we saw uh we had basically the tip of the motor signal like up to here somewhere so we want to try to do is go in the middle of it and then uh, if it's still kind of moving around like crazy, kind of just increase it and decrease it a little bit. You want it to stay in the area of where uh, the signal is going. So as you can see here, now we should get a pretty stable one. And if I were to move it away, so, so let's do this real quick. So let me show you if I remove the trigger here. All right, so now the trigger, if I remove the trigger all the way above our signal, it'll start doing this thing, you see that? So the trigger basically just makes it something readable and just makes it static and nice and beautiful and that's what the trigger does here and it's that's it that's all you really got to do so and you also have these sync modes but we'll get into this stuff later on this is a rising edge so it triggers so it sets it exactly in the middle from the part where it rises as you can see there all right it's right in the middle where it rises if we change it to falling edge then the whole thing would be pushed back and then this side would be in the center but we want rising because that's our signal uh, something like a falling edge would be an inverted signal like an S bus or some of that nature and some other things can be used for But here we want rising edge and as you can see 
our motors are working absolutely beautiful. So now let's go ahead and do the LED one. This one's a bit interesting, it's pretty cool also. So let's go ahead and get started on that. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug everything. This might be difficult on a complete build, um, or it could be also easy, depending. So what you need to do is you need to figure out which one is the ground on the, on the LED. And that's usually the shorter leg here. And also, you, there's a little round part around the LED. If you take very close look at it, you'll find a flat spot. Like, it's, it'll do this. It'll be going around like this in a circle. And then you'll just see a flat spot. It's very tiny, but you, you will feel it. So, uh, if you feel that, then that's also the negative or the ground. So, the short lead is the ground here. And this is the positive. All right, guys. So, the first thing we want to do is let's prepare the pads here. Because this is a fresh flight controller. So, yours might be different. But it's all the same thing. Just find ground and the signal that you want to test the motor signal you want to test so we're going to test actually motor three here so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to prepare the ground pad here I'm not going to put much solder just a little bit and then i'm just going to add a little solder to the uh motor three output here and there we go all right so now what i want to do is I want to come here and grab the LED and again we need to find the ground and the ground here was so it's the short leg here so let's go ahead and set this short leg on ground you could also set up wires with this and then solder it to the place you want it doesn't have to be a good perfect solder just anything that will actually give you some kind of connection here there we go so we have ground in right there and now what we want to do is we want to do the positive well, not the positive, sorry. The positive side of the LED is going to go to the signal here. So that's something to take note of. And be careful when doing this because you could actually burn yourself. And you don't want these two to touch uh, because that'll be kind of bad. You can ruin it depending. So just be careful. And just make sure it's unplugged while you do this. All right, and that's it. So as you can see here, the ground went to, you could put the ground on any ground pad that's on the flight controller. However, the positive side of the LED has to go to the signal uh, of the motor you want. So this is the signal for motor three. So let's go ahead and see what's gonna happen now. Now, as you can see, it already turned on right here. So let's go ahead and check this out. So this was motor three and let's see what's gonna happen. As you can see, it's getting brighter and it's getting dimmer, brighter, dimmer. It's not easy to see on camera, but in real life, you could totally see that. And if you had an LED, which is really not showing it, what you can do is you could come down here and I believe you could play with this a little bit more. You could probably set PWM, save and reboot. And then we're going to connect. Hopefully PWM has a little bit faster signal, but yeah, you could totally see the difference on that it looks super bright on the um on the camera here but in real life it's not but it's very good and you can also totally tell the difference so let's just move motor 3 by itself here so that's another way you could actually test if your motor has a, if you have a bad output on your motor um pad right here so yeah that's really it i mean uh you can also test this if you do some kind of remapping uh, when you remap a motor to an LED pin, for example, let's just say we mapped motor 3 to um, the buzzer pin for some reason. I don't think that's possible, but it could be. What you want to do is, you want to actually do the same process, positive from the LED here, and put it right there to whatever you change it to. And ground always goes to ground. So that's something very important to take note of. And it works the same way with the oscilloscope. If we change it here, we just grab the part where we could probe like this. Ground will always stay on ground. Ground will not be changed. It'll always go to ground. And whatever is left over, which for example here we have the positive, then that will go to the place you want to test. And that's how this thing works. And it's, it's very simple. So if you think you damaged it, you think some short circuit happened and you think maybe one of your motor pads got damaged or, you know, your pins from your flight controller, you can go ahead and test it that way and um, you should be good to go. And for example, you know, this also works. Let's just say for some reason, uh, you're, you know, the pads, you know, motor two or three and four or five or whatever, you, you don't know what is what anymore and you can't find any documentation. 
This is also another way to do it. You would put an LED on each motor pad and then just start moving motor one, two, three, four in the beta flight and you will know which motor is what and you should be good to go. So it's very simple and it's very easy and it's very budget friendly way to test with an LED, but it's always better to test with this because you don't have to play uh, with the protocols, but you could also do that as well. And well, that's it guys. So that's really concluded for this video. I really hope it helped someone out there. Maybe not now, maybe in the future. And if it does, please leave a like and a comment down below. That would be super awesome. And that's going to include it for this video, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And I will see you next time. See you guys. Take care.